World War II Fighter Plane Chum finds an ad for a World War II plane, which he thinks will make some profit for the shop, so he informs Rick, who, in turn, takes a trip down to the hangar with Corey. This is cool. So this is it? This is our 1942 North American AT-6 Texan. Are you guys interested in buying this airplane? Both of us have been talking about getting our pilot's license, and uh, I bet I could do a pretty good job of crashing this thing. <laughs> While looking, the seller exposes the fact that the item has been flown for combat. So it's uh, a 1942. It flew in World War II in uh, the Korean War. This one did? Yeah, it did. So did it ever get shot? No, but it actually was a gunnery trainer. They actually had a gun mounted right here, and the pilots could actually fire the guns. So in World War II, this was the airplane the government used to train all our pilots. Corey asks for the price of the plane. $185,000. Before they can make a deal, the Harrisons call in Matthew, a former fully certified combat pilot for the Navy, to come over and have a look at the item. Aircraft is fairly basic to fly. Landing and takeoff is a little hard with the tailwheel, but literally with the stick, it's up, down, left, right to maneuver the aircraft. You've got a pretty easy throttle. So the last thing to do here is to take this airplane flying. Dennis and I should go airborne. Yeah, let's take her up. All right, let's do it. Do your stuff. Before he can make any judgments, Matthew asks for permission to take the sky with the plane. I wonder what it's like to just hop in any plane you see and be able to fly it. I don't know, but I think it would be pretty cool. Okay, you ready to go? Here we go, man. Now just stick in a different leg head, steer down the gunner. I thought the aircraft performed very well on takeoff. After a quick flight across the sky, Matt estimates what he believes the plane should be worth. It's about 170000 on the spot. Okay. So. Yeah, I think that's probably a, a fair estimate. With the price out of the way, Corey asks for the answer to another concern that plagues his mind. First thing is you need to hang it. That's about $300 a month. Then this aircraft needs to fly. It needs to get lubricated oil through the systems, fuel, everything's about $275 an hour to fly it. After hearing all that needs to be answered, Rick tries to make a deal. Oh. You know, we sort of came out here on a whim. Uh -huh. So on a whim, I'll give you 140 grand. The seller makes his deal, but Rick tries to leverage the factors that come with buying the plane as a tool in the negotiation. You yeah. gave me 150, we'd probably have a deal today. Yeah. As a businessman, I will go 140. Despite the accommodations he made with the price, Rick and Corey reneged on the deal. I think we can pay, pay you 145 for it. I'll give you a call and we'll do it. But uh, right now, I'm gonna hold you at 140. Boy, we were really close, so why don't we uh, just uh, think about that a little bit, and uh, maybe there'll be a phone ringing between here and Vegas. Have a go with me. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Military prototype hybrid. Corey got a call from a customer hoping to sell a military prototype truck. Oh, <laughs> what in the world is this? Batman's tank. <laughs> it's a prototype hybrid intended for the military. Awesome. Rick tries to check the inside of the truck before he makes his move. I can get in? Absolutely. Don't hurt yourself now. Yeah, this is not exactly fat guy friendly. <laughs> well, I don't think they wanted people to get out of it. Actually, it's not too bad. Yeah, see? Especially if you were in military shape. <laughs> After the seller tells Rick he has no clue how to get the truck to work, Rick asks for the price tag anyway. Asking 150. Rick calls in an expert to appraise the truck. Obviously, there were some guys that put some real time and effort into engineering into this. Something you could put a, a small team of guys in and move them very quickly on the battlefield, faster than you could in a tank or something like that. With the military background of the item and all the machinery fitted on it, Chum Lee voices his concern. So is this legal to own? Yeah, I know guys that own Hellcat tanks that actually shoot, so I mean, there's no reason <laughs> why you can't own this. Having addressed all their concerns, the expert estimates what the truck could be worth. I would say maybe $25,000, $30,000 tops. Really? With the sharp decline from the original asking price, the seller tries to negotiate a better deal with Rick. Are you interested in it at all? I mean, for like 20 grand. To get this thing running is anywhere between 50 bucks and 500,000. Okay. 20 grand on the table, man. 95,000 is kind of what I got to be at. We're just way too far apart. Okay. Okay. If you change your mind, give me a call. All right.
World War II Sherman tank. Rick, Corey, Chumley, and Alex took a trip to the desert to look at an authentic Sherman tank used during World War II in Iwo Jima. Manufactured in 1942 and with a built-in flamethrower system. So this thing actually saw action in Iwo Jima. This one did. It did see action. It was knocked out three times in the first 24 hours. Um, it was finally taken out of service when they hit the turret at the turret bearing and uh, we met the gentleman who had to back it out. He's still alive today. I look at it, I just find it incredible because, I mean, it's from Iwo Jima. I mean, it's like when they raised the flag on Mount Suribashi, I mean, it's probably the most iconic photo of all of World War II. With the history of the item, Rick asked for the price before he can make any decision. I'm looking to get a million and a half. Before deciding if he wants the thing, Rick takes the tank out for a test run. Having had fun, Rick asks Alex's opinion on the tank. I mean, it is what it is. It speaks for itself. Sherman's are the most desired American tank from World War II. It runs well. It fires well. It's got historical provenance from Iwo Jima. There is one that we know of that sold in the last year that wasn't documented to being at any major battle in the World War II, and it was sold for 1.2 million. So at one and a half million, I, I think that's a fair price. After the team takes their leave, Rick babbles through the reasons he can't buy the tank. It's amazing. It's got amazing history. Everything about it is absolutely great. But um, I'd so out of the ballpark for me. <laughs> Thanks, man. Amazing day. Soviet fighter jet. After taking a ride down to see a customer with a Soviet fighter jet, Rick calls in a buddy to take a look at the plane before he talks price to the owner. So this is an awesome jet. This is an L-39 Albatross. It's from the former Soviet bloc, built in Czechoslovakia. There's a couple thousand of them made, and it's the advanced jet trainer for the Soviet bloc planes. There's several third world countries that still use this. Uh, Georgia, Libya. Matt, the expert, tries to take a look at the jet to confirm the condition it's in. See if there's any leaks, any signs of leaks. Uh, everything looks pretty normal in there. Okay. After confirming if the jet is still flyable, Matt tries to invite Rick or Chumley up for a quick lap. You know, everything looks good to go. We've checked the inside, the outside of the plane, all the paperwork. I think the last thing we need to do is uh, go flying. After Rick and Chum refuse the chance to fly out of fear, Matt tries the aircraft with the seller. Yeah, I just don't think it's smart getting in a 25-year-old Russian jet. Yeah, I think he's nuts for flying jets for a living. After the successful test flight, Rick asks for an estimate of the jet's worth. You know, I think as far as value, uh, 170 to 180,000, right in there. Rick raises his concerns about what it might cost to maintain the jet before he could profit from it. You know, you're gonna need to hangar it, so that's gonna be an expense. You obviously don't want this out in the elements. And then the other expense is the maintenance. You need to fly this jet, otherwise it doesn't work. After Matt takes his leave, Rick starts the negotiation. So what do you want for it? I'd like to get 200000 out of it. I think it's a fair price. The buying is not the problem. It's owning. It's the expensive part. And the scary thing about this is how much it would cost me if I didn't sell it real quick. If you make a decent offer, I could actually hanger it for you. That might take some of your carrying expenses out of the equation. But it would be pretty badass to own a jet, Rick. It's a big boy sport. Um, yeah, this is, uh, well, it's the ultimate toy. We can start at the low end. I mean, if you give me $150,000, uh, then I'd definitely consider that. I'd go 80 grand, but I wouldn't go no more. The seller, after receiving a shallow offer, tries to take a stab at Rick's ego as a last-ditch effort. Just the more I think about it, the more I think this... It's just too much for me. It's beyond what I know. I really believe if I start getting mixed up with this thing, in the end, I'm going to lose my ass. Have a nice day, man. Fair enough, I hope man. you sell it. Thank you. <laughs> World War II Indian Chief Motorcycle. A man walks into the gold and silver pawn shop and meets with Corey to inform him about a desire to sell off a bike in his possession. I've got a really great motorcycle. I think you're going to want to check it out. Sweet. I got an alley in the back. You want to pull it back there? We got it. The seller, Robert, tells Corey all he can about the item. It was originally built in uh, early 1940, sent over to France for the war effort. Okay. And uh, about 5,000 of them were made. Um, they were all used originally by the French, but when the Germans came in, the Germans use them. Corey asks the most important question. What are you looking to get out of the bike? So, there's less than 400 in the world. Okay. Um, so I was hoping to get between 55 and 60,000 dollars. 
The Pawn starts calling Chris, a local bike business owner, to give the bikes value from his own perspective. It's still history, yes, yeah. and it still has a value. With the market today, I put a price on this at About 46000 With the jury out on the item, the two parties get right into negotiation. Be 38 grand for it. That's, that's a little bit too low. I can't, I can't do that. I, I think I, I, 38 is a high number for me, man. I'm really, I'm, I'm not going to be making that much profit off of it. Corey tries to seal the deal with a price he finds fair. I got to get 40 out of it. And I hate to disagree with your expert, but you're looking at, you know, 50 grand. I really can't go, go back for less than 40 grand. Yeah, I'm a sucker for motorcycles, man. I'm not gonna lose it over two grand, 40 grand. Let's take a plan. Thanks. You wanna write them up? Okay. 